Let's take a look at England's 2006 World Cup squad and see where they are now. Paul Robinson. We all remember Paul Robinson. He's the fellow who punted a goal kick over Scott Carson and then went off celebrating like a madman, completely breaking the goalkeeper code. Anyway, Robinson did get his comeuppance, ending his England career the next year when he decided to kick fresh air against Croatia, then spent seven years at Blackburn before retiring in 2017 at Burnley. Scott Carson. It's mad to think Scott Carson has a Champions League medal considering his career has been bang average for the most part. Four England caps, relegated with Charlton and West Brom, spells in Turkey and Wigan and since 2015 has been trapped at Derby County, a club which could be handed a 15 point lead at the top of the championship and still not go up. David James. I'll admit I was surprised David James made this tournament considering he's 36 years old and had just been chucked out of Man City. And a Man City who were rooting under the couch for spare change. Well lads, you can imagine what I was thinking when James was starting a goal in a last 16 game against Germany three weeks off his 41st birthday. Namely, how the hell do England not have one half decent goalkeeper in the entire country? Anyway, since 2006 he's won an FA Cup, been relegated with Pompey, signed for Bristol City, Bournemouth and some club out the back arse of Iceland to pay off the bills, and he was most recently manager of Karela Blasters. Gary Neville. Gary Neville was never a world class defender, but still, the man lasted nearly 20 years at Old Trafford playing over 400 games and winning more trophies than his talent deserved. The man should be given some sort of respect. Anyway, what has he done since he hung up with the boost in 2011? Well, he's branched upon the tree, then there was property development, then there was helping Roy Hodgson set fire to England's tournament hopes. I mean, did he not think to tell him that Harry Kane shouldn't have been taking the corners? Then there was Selford City co ownership. Oh, and let's not forget his three months of absolute ineptitude as manager of Valencia, where the fans probably still wake up in the dead of night, terrified that he'll one day be reappointed. Rio Ferdinand. At the time, Rio Ferdinand was one of the best defenders in world football for both Manchester United and England. He also had one of the most nauseating football shows known to man, murking his fellow teammates. Yes, what a laugh. Since then, his career slid down a hole to die once Sir Alex Ferguson retired in 2013, with his pace having vanished by the time he signed for QPR to finish his career on a sour note. These days, he's a pun for BT, where he can be found telling Newcastle fans to be more grateful to the wonderful Mike Ashley, who just happened to flog his merch at Sports Direct. John Terry. I'm sure at the time John Terry was great friends with Rio. Not anymore since the whole racism thing with his brother at Loftus Road. Terry has had a successful time since then. Don't get me wrong. I mean three more league titles in a Champions League followed. I mean he wasn't actually on the pitch for it. But you can bet he has the photographic evidence to lie to the grandkids. But it's also been riddled with controversy. Anyway he retired on a playoff final defeat with Aston Villa last season and is currently part of the coaching staff. For a defence which still plays Alan Hutton. Jamie Carragher. Jamie Carragher didn't seem to enjoy sitting around waiting for the Terry for Ferdinand to pick up an injury. So within one year of this tournament, he'd retired from England to concentrate on winning trophies for Liverpool. And a short paid off, lifting that prestigious League Cup five years later in 2012. Now he can be found either sitting in the Sky Studios with half the nation adjusting their reception, desperately trying to work out what the hell he's saying, or he can be found stuck in traffic, desperately trying to remind himself that spit belongs in his mouth, and not in the face of the little girl watching Finding Nemo in the parallel car. Saul Campbell. Saul Campbell might have just scored in the Champions League final, but he was still getting booted out of Arsenal that summer, winding up at Portsmouth for a few years. Wasn't the weirdest career move he'd make. I mean, within three years, he'd be signing for Notts County. Dipped his head in for one game. Clearly didn't like the smell of Lordy piss infecting the dressing room, coupled with the pitch that felt like a farmer's bog and was off to get rescued by Arsenal in 2010. He retired in 2011 at Newcastle, tried to become Mayor of London. Not the smartest thing considering it's a city where at least 25% of the voting public probably wish a violent death upon him and is currently the manager of Macclesfield Town. I'm guessing he's since learned to live with the deathly smell of League 2. Ashley Cole. Jesus Christ, does every member of this goddamn squad end up cheating on their missus? Within a few months, Cole would have crossed over to Chelsea, effectively ending any chance of him ever being able to walk through North London without getting garbage chucked at his head. Eight years after that, he wound down his career at Roma, with his infectious personality clearly rubbing off on his teammates. LA Galaxy was next, and he's now one of the only lads from this squad still going at the age of 38 at Derby County. Oh, and his ex-wife also got fluffed up the duff by someone she met when she was 14. Wayne Bridge. I could give you the rundown of this man's career, but really, who cares? This lad's whole life has just been relegated to one footnote. He was the fella who was screwed over by Chelsea and England captain, right? Honestly, everyone is just going to have forgotten about Bridges' career, having played for Southampton, Chelsea and Man City, retiring at Reading in 2014, because apparently he's just a lad who was forced to miss the World Cup because his mate nicked his woman. David Beckham. How can I quickly sum up what David Beckham has done since? Right, within a year he left Real Madrid for LA Galaxy, completely revolutionising the MLS. Beckham does not know how many lives he has changed. Without him, Bradley Wright Phillips might have had to force reality and seek out a career on the bench of Bristol Rovers or some shite, instead of living in his fancy land of pretending to be a world-class hitman overseas. Beckham also took in a couple of loan spells at Milan, which just happens to be the fashion capital of Europe. Wonder whose decision that was, lads. Before he retired in, yeah. 
Paris. I mean, we get it, David. Your wife clearly wears the pants. Aaron Lennon. Aaron Lennon is still only 31, which means he was just 19 when he was thrust into this squad. Mind you, next to Theo Walcott, he looked like a goddamn pensioner. Lennon's career exploded with a rapid pace in his early years, like when he set up Peter Crouch for a winner at the San Siro. But as he's grown older, his quickness has slowed, his end product has worsened even further. Ever inside him in 2015? Jesus, plucking an aging England prodigy who relies on his pace from a North London club? Making a bit of a habit of that, aren't they? Since 2018, he's been at Burnley. Has not been great. Owen Hargreaves. I know he was at Bayern Munich, but this was arguably Owen Hargreaves' breakout tournament in the eyes of English media. Probably because he was the only one who scored a bastard penalty, but he got that move to Manchester United off the back of this tournament, won the Champions League in his first season, scored the winner against Arsenal, and then his body just caved in on itself, with Fergie ending up calling him the biggest disappointment of his career. Bit harsh when the likes of Bebe still exist. And let's not forget, you once predicted Phil Jones to become the club's greatest ever player. Hargreaves, the man with about five accents shoved into one mouth, retired in Manchester, but playing one game for City. I mean, I have no idea why they signed him. I think that was just back when it was fashionable for them to hoard broken Englishmen. Jermaine Genus. Jeez, you forget Jermaine Genus went to a World Cup. You'd also forget Jermaine Genus was actually half decent at one point. Within a few years, he'd also have limbs like spaghetti and had to retire at the age of 31. So he's in punditry at the minute. He still looks like he'd probably get asked for ID and nights out. Frank Lampard. The man who West Ham fans thought would never make it as a footballer. Right, well he ended up playing in two Champions League finals after this. Winning one, finishes Chelsea's record goal scorer before ending up in America and New York City via a year with Man City. Which was just weird for all involved, especially when he scored against Chelsea. Judging by the look on his face, it looked like he just fingered his cousin. Anyway, since 2018 he's been the manager of Derby County, where he's done alright. Steven Gerrard. Steven Gerrard played 10 more years before retirement. He won one trophy, and even that was the Christmas cracker tin can masquerading as the League Cup. That is a disgrace for a player like him. Currently the manager of Rangers, he's already seen off Brendan Rodgers. Let's see if he ever wins the league there. Michael Carrick. I remember what Michael Carrick was given the number 16 jersey and paraded at Old Trafford after this tournament. Man United fans nearly had a hernia. For God's sake, it took some more than five years to get on board with the enigma that was Carrick. I'm sorry lads, 464 appearances for the club, 5 league titles in the Champions League, he was a great signing and is currently a member of the coaching staff. Stuart Downing. Stuart Downing was just 21 at the time and it helped Middlesbrough to a UEFA Cup final. He was tipped for big things. Suppose he did get them. I mean, he got a move to Aston Villa three years later and then Liverpool two years after that and then it all fell apart. God, he was woeful at Anfield. Not much better at West Ham before returning a shell of a man to Bordeaux in 2015. Where he remains, having checked off what he managed to avoid in his first spell at the club, a relegation. Joe Cole. Another man whose career seemed to have fallen off a cliff when he signed in the dotted line at Millwood. Joe Cole. A great player in his day. His day was certainly not 2010. It was made even worse worse when Gerard was comparing him to Messi. Just stop lad. Next you'll be saying David Ngog is the next Samuel Eto'o. He was chucked out to Lille on loan soon enough where he managed to convince Eden Hazard to join Chelsea. He returned to West Ham in 2013, signed for a hopeless Aston Villa in 2014 and then smacked his set off Coventry and Tampa Bay Rowdies as his career ended up splattered in the sidewalk. Peter Crouch. For a man who grew up looking like a human lamppost to have finished his career with 22 England goals is quite something. I don't think anyone saw that when he couldn't score in his first three months for Liverpool. He signed for Portsmouth 2008, Tottenham 2009 and and then managed to convince his fashionista wife to settle for eight years in Stoke-on-Trent. Not sure how he managed to do that. Maybe she's happier now considering he's dragged his family off to Burnley. Actually no I very much doubt that. Still though, the man is 38. How is he still in the Premier League? That, that, that is mental. Wayne Rooney. Wayne Rooney is the record goal scorer for both Manchester United and England, has still found time to take in two stints for Boyle Club Everton, and is still going strong scoring hat-tricks out in America. And still, people say this man never achieved his potential. Lads, would you stop? Not every boy wonder is going to turn out like the freakish Cristiano Ronaldo, and that's okay. It's not like he turned out like Theo Walcott either. Speaking of which, Theo Walcott. I knew at the time, sticking Theo Walcott in this squad was madness. Darren Bed probably felt like throwing himself in front of the next train to London. Apparently 20 goals a season mean nothing when there's a young 17 year old who can run really fast. Walcott hadn't played a single minute of football for Arsenal and yet he was being chucked on the plane. Lunacy. It's like taking Eddie and Keddie after the next World Cup. And the ironic thing is he hasn't even been to a World Cup since. Just won Euros. He lasted 12 years at Arsenal, more of an indictment of the club's malaise more than anything, and just recently signed for Everton. At the age of 30 this man was definitely a disappointment. Michael Owen. Another youth prodigy, Michael Owen ended up winning the Ballon d'Or, so he's not exactly Theo Walker territory, although he was finished by the age of 30 as well. This was the tournament which probably ended Owen as we knew him, never recovering from injury, too scared to break into a sprint for Newcastle, waved the white flag as he captained the club who paid over 100 grand a week to relegation, torched any bond to the club who made him by taking one last payday to sit in the bench at Man United, before retiring in embarrassing fashion at Stoke in 2013. Currently a pundit, with most young viewers just remembering him as that guy who couldn't get past Jonathan Walters in the Stoke team.